What's up guys and welcome back once again to the reviews. Today I've got another cooler from Thermal Right. This is their Frost Commander 140. I've done a lot of coolers from Thermal Right and uh, I've been impressed with pretty much all of them. Um, actually all of them, to be honest. Um, so we'll get this unboxed, uh, we'll show you what it looks like outside of the case, then we'll get it installed and uh, we'll, uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's in the case and uh, then I'll talk about the thermal results and obviously what I think about the cooler. So, as I said in the beginning, this is an absolute beast and as you can see now it is absolutely huge. Dual heat, uh, dual towers, five massive eight millimeter heat pipes. Um, so it should provide a lot of cooling, and obviously quite a uh, a lot of, th of fins for the air to flow through. And it's got a sort of grey metallic sort of finish to the top of it, so it'll fit in pretty much any case. Obviously, the rest of it is a silver in colour, and it got the thermal right logo on the top. Um, other than that, there's not a lot to show you. Obviously, standard uh, cold plate, copper, nickel plated uh, cold plate. And obviously mounting screws are there, not really much more to tell you about that. Um, and then the fans that come with it are the this 120mm fan, standard grey uh, thermal right fan. Again, should fit most builds. Um, feels really, really solid to be fair, um, really, really nice. There's no sticker on it or anything, you can just see, sort of see the hub there. Um, standard affair really, with vibration mounts. And then there's the 140mm fan that comes with it as well, which is sort of a, an odd shape to go inside the cooler. Um, as you can see there, it will go inside there and pull the air through. Um, so other than that, standard PWM fans, um, not really much more to talk about. So we'll get it installed and then we'll uh, see how it performs. Right, so the cooler is in and the results are in. Um, so let's uh, talk about the cooler itself. Um, now, obviously, I've shown you a little bit of B-roll of what it looks like. Not a lot. There's not much to show, really. It's obviously not got any RGB or anything like that. Um, but it looks really nice in your case. Um, if you're going for a sort of muted, no RGB sort of build, then this is absolutely perfect for it. Um, but I just use standard uh, fan clips on it, which come with most coolers, which means you could actually throw your own... Uh, fans on it as well if you want so if you've got some RGB fans that you want to put on this then you could as well and, and make it into an RGB theme for your build make the cooler look, look a little bit more exciting then you could do that no problem whatsoever um, so let's talk about the thermals first and then I'll talk about my thoughts about this cooler and what I like and uh, maybe a few things I don't like on it um, so the, the performance um, let's first talk about the uh, build um, this, this, this is being used on. It's 5900X with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 4 times 8 gig at 3600. Um, it's got an RTX 3080 in it, not that that really matters for a CPU cooler review. And it's on a B550E Strix board from Asus. Um, so it's decent uh, uh, build, high, high core count build um, on the 5900X and it does get quite hot so it really will test this cooler. Um, so the performance, the idle temperature of this was uh, 33 degrees which isn't bad at all it's around 18 degrees in this room at the moment which is what it's been for most of my testing recently um, so yeah doing really well uh, and then we did two runs uh, did Cinebench uh, five minute multi-core to really hit the CPU hard and then also did superposition at 1080p extreme to just give you sort of more of a game sort of um, environment for testing. Um, I'm not going to test on those games because you don't really need to know that as long as you know how well the cooler performs at its um, at the worst case scenario then you'll know it's going to do a great job um, or it's going to do a, a, a better job when, you, when you're gaming and things when CPU isn't hit as hard. Um, so Cinebench maximum temperature of 72 degrees which is absolutely brilliant. Um, all cores were hitting 4.35 gigahertz um, multi-core like I said so all 12 cores are hitting that um, and like I say, that is the worst case scenario. Um, this is very comparable to a 360 AI I've just taken out. So as you can see, it's, it performs really, really well. Um, obviously it's massive, so you expect it to perform well. And then we went on to superposition at 1080p extreme, like I said before, and we got a maximum temperature of 59 degrees. So again, absolutely fantastic. That's more of a sort of what you'd expect in a gaming scenario. So you're gonna have no issues whatsoever when uh, gaming with this at all. Uh, and the clock speeds when running that were up to 4.9 gigahertz on some of the cores and 4.8 and 4.7 on the rest of the cores. So really boosting really, really high, allowing the 5900X to stretch its legs. After that, I did some acoustic testing to see sort of the 
um, the sound levels of this cooler and obviously my case at the moment has got uh, it's got five fans in it as well uh, four 140s and one 120 fan in it um, so they're running I can't completely turn them off so I couldn't isolate just the cooler on its own and um, so you are going to obviously have some of that noise in there as well but the cooler um, when basically I ran it at minimum speeds 50% uh, and 100% to see the uh, the decibel levels at minimum which was around 300 uh, RPM um, that's the minimum I was allowed to run it down to on the motherboard control it was at 27 decibels um, so really really quiet at 50% it only went up to 27.5 so that's really really good so if you set the right curve it's going to be very quiet for most of the time and then at 100% it was 37.5 so it is quite loud um, you've got two fans on that obviously blowing air straight through it so it is going to be quite loud um, but then again this is again with the case sides off um, which obviously that you're not going to be doing normally so um, still not bad at all so that's uh, the, the thermal results and acoustic results done um, now let's talk about a few things I like and don't like about it um, well, the things I like about it is easy, really, really easy to install. Use the standard AM4 backplate when using AM4. Obviously, it's different for Intel. Um, and then it's just two screws straight onto their bracket that, that comes included. Really, really easy to install. Um, RAM clearance is very good. However, bear in mind, uh, as I'll show on the screen now, um, installing the front fan will cover up your uh, RAM. So if you've got RGB RAM, then you are going to cover that up quite a bit. Um, however, you could combat this by moving the fan to the back um, and using it to pull through and then you'll be able to see your uh, RAM. It's got sort of a cutout on it to, to allow it to clear RAM, so you shouldn't have uh, any problems with most RAM. This is a T-Force from uh, Team Group uh, RGB Delta, uh, which is quite tall RAM, um, so you shouldn't have much problems with most RAM out there. Um, now let's get on to the things I don't like. Um, it uses those clips to put fans on, which a lot of coolers do. I know it's not it's not uh, something out of the ordinary, um, but I hate them. <laughs> um, I hate all coolers. That, I don't hate the coolers, but I hate I hate it when they're used on coolers. I wish there was some better way of installing fans. Um, so. But again, it's a, it's a norm now, really. Uh, also, the clip when I was putting it on the front fan, it has actually pulled, started to pull the vibration mount off because it was quite tight on there. Um, that could have just be my my error. But other than that, um, yeah, that's that's what happened. Um, and other than that, not really anything else I, I, I could say bad about it. Um, I don't know if they do an RGB version of the Frost Commander. I don't think I've seen one. Again, I'll put any links in the description below for you to have a look. Um, it would be nice to see an RGB version of this or an all-black version or an all-white version for those different themed builds. Um, but as it is, it's obviously grey and um, will fit in most builds. And that's pretty much all there is to say about it. Is that's, there's not a lot to dislike about it. It performs really, really well. It looks decent. Uh, and yeah... <laughs> Can't really say much more. Really impressed once again from Thermorite. Again, thank you for sending this out. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I um, hope you liked it and it gave you some insight into this cooler and whether you would like to purchase it. It is around £50 in the, in the UK. Uh, I'm not sure uh, where it is, how much it is elsewhere. Um, but again, I'll put some links in the description below for you to have a look. Um, so it is a decent price for a really well-built cooler that performs well. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I say, um, if you don't, already subscribed then please don't forget to subscribe if you want to and um, if you like this video give it a like and if you didn't give it a dislike and leave any comments in the comment section below and i'll be happy to get back to you and thank you for watching and i'll see you soon